y'all now they got it looking like connor might have been the one to set the house on fire even though it wouldn't surprise me after the way he's been acting pray to catch you whispering i'm praying to catch me listening i'm praying to catch you whispering Annalise meets with Nate after her release and he's got a bit of bad news. This is what he tells her that he kind of sniffed around the crime materials enough that his signature has miraculously been affixed to trans to a transfer order for West Virginia. So in other words, you know, he's signed so many documents that it was quite easily for them to take his signature and put it on that document. And if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, he took Laurel down there to see the body he would have never known that that's what was going on. The fact that his signature is the one that's on, on that line is kind of hard to prove that he didn't have anything to do with it. We find out that, uh, going back to last episode where Nate and Wes met up in Annalise's house, basically they had a conversation where Wes, I mean, uh, Nate was basically trying to um, talk Wes into snitching on Annalise because he got a call from the investigators basically saying that Wes left and, you know, do you know where he is or whatever? And he was like, no. So then that's when he tried to tell her, tell him basically that, you know, Annalise, you know, all she does is look out for herself. She doesn't care about nobody. But Wes was basically saying that, you know, you don't know Annalise. Like, I know Annalise. You don't know what I've done to her. Referencing the fact that he was the one that murdered Sam. And he was uh, telling Annalise basically recounting the scene that happened and you know he's feeling bad because he feels like if i hadn't left the house um maybe west would still be alive but it's like you didn't know that all of this was gonna happen so how would you have known okay well let me stay here just in case something pop off um but it was good that he you know was able to clear his name because it did kind of look like he was the one that killed west even though that's how they do it every episode they making it look like kind of the way they did it last season where they revealed to us who didn't die and that's kind of how they're doing they leaving us on a cliffhanger making us think that it was a certain person but then when the next episode comes on they reveal that it wasn't them annalise basically has a conversation with the kids she you know laurel is on, on this whole thing about which you know i'm gonna give laurel the pass because that was her boyfriend else, so she's still grieving but had it been somebody else i would have been like okay you're doing a little bit too much but you know she was pissed off at annalise because annalise comes to them i'm i don't want to say she was trying to make them feel sorry for her but that's kind of what it seemed like and so you know laura got pissed off because her whole thing is why everybody's sitting around you know, so concerned with their own personal business. Nobody is really taking the time to look into who killed Wes. So in the midst of this, she hires this private investigator to look up information about Wes. And she discovers that the Mahoney's actually did a DNA test on Wes and found out that he was Wallace Mahoney's child. But I'm confused because from what I understand, the only contact they had with Wes was when he testified against Charles in court saying you know trying to prove that he was the one that killed wallace mahoney but i'm like so when did they have time to get a dna sample from him I'm, I'm not sure but anyway and so um michaela and them were you know came over to her house basically to see you know how she was doing it so that's how they discovered that that's what it was so then they all come back to bonnie's house because this is where annalise is staying at since her house was burned up and this is when laura reveals and so you know annalise get pissed off like girl you just like wes you know, you go around snooping, snooping for and stuff that ain't got nothing to do with you. Like these people are dangerous and you know, you're going to mess around and get yourself killed. And so this is where she reveals that, you know, they were responsible for killing her child. She was eight months pregnant and killed the baby. And so she goes into this whole thing of, you know, the best thing to do right now is to keep ourselves safe. And so Laura gets mad and was like, you just as, or he could have done so much better than you. Um, and I understand where Annalise is coming from, but at, uh, because i mean you know she cares about wes and i know that she wants to find out who it was that killed him because it puts her in the clear but then at the same time like she said she knows the mahoney she's dealt with them before she knows what she's capable of i i'm kind of wanting to say that the mahoney's might be part of involved in the mob some kind of way but you know like i said she knows what they're capable of and so that's why she kind of wants to lay low um because it's not it, it, i mean when you think about it it's not a coincidence that not long after wes uh, somewhat I guess you can say he confessed and had Charles Mahoney locked up for killing the father 
and then next thing you know, he wind up dead. So I'm just saying, you know, I I, I understand Laurel's viewpoint of how why she feels that the Mahoney's are responsible for Wes's death. Um, and so at the end of the episode, okay, no, I, I'm gonna wait. She types up this letter and takes it to, um, I guess like the head of the DA's office, basically telling them like, girl. The DA's office has been acting against me a certain kind of way and, you know, I suggest that y'all look into the case and wop, wop, wop. Basically trying to come at, come back at them. And so, but the lady basically was like, girl, pretty much telling Annalise, like, girl, you don't scare me. Annalise was like, girl, if you don't find that body, it's, you know, something is going to go down. And so in the midst of this, she goes to Oliver's house. Um, and basically has him to leak the article because apparently the article had already been typed up or whatever about the DA's office leaking, I mean, losing the body. And so she had him to hack the, whatever the newspaper is and leak the article. In the midst of this, the lady ends up calling her back like, girl, I can't believe you leaked this article while, while Annalise tried to play this whole game. Like, girl, I didn't have nothing to do with that article. And she said, let me tell you something. You try this fool stuff again, not only am I going to have them to try you for every charge that you've been charged, but I'm also going to have them to try for the death penalty. Um, and she said, now that's a threat right there. Now, in the midst of this, we see where Bonnie goes and meets with Frank and she hands him some papers. So when they get to court, basically, Frank basically stands up and was basically trying to request a subpoena for Atwood's records, phone, log, email, text, all that. At first they thought that it was, you know, Annalise's doing, but uh, Bonnie was like, girl, Annalise ain't even talked to Frank since, you know, everything happened. And so, the, and then the, the uh, what's his name? D.A. Denver was like, girl, well, didn't you go to see him? She was like, yeah, but I went to tell him to rehire his lawyer. Basically, he feels like there's enough to suggest some bias against D.A. Atwood and she brings up um, Nate and the and the district uh, and Denver was like, girl, what? Well, Nate don't even work on this case no more. And Frank was like, well, uh, Atwood and uh, Nate were dating, won't they? Um, and so then the Denver tried to throw in this whole thing, like, girl, basically we can't tell our people who they can and cannot date. But it does kind of look strange because everybody knew that Annalise and Nate was messing around prior to the Atwood and Nate and messing around so it kind of I see where the judge felt like it might be some bias and so this is where you know they find out that Nate's that Wes's body has been cremated and also that Atwood was responsible she admitted to moving the body y'all what if Atwood is the one that that uh had something to do with it because like if y'all remember Nate said that the 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 what's the lady's name the the autopsy lady said that he was dead before the fire. So what if Atwood had something to do with him dying, and that was the reason why she had the body moved and had him cremated because she didn't want the people to find out that she didn't want to have something to do with it. Just saying. Um, and so at the end of this, this is basically where you know Annalise goes and basically talks to Laura, basically telling her like you know I'm sorry for everything that you're going through. You know, I don't really know how I feel right now, but I promise you that we're going to find out who did this. We just got to stick together and wop, wop, wop. So, in the midst of this, we see where, because at the first half of the episode, um, President Hargrove called Annalise basically like, girl, if you need somebody to talk to, if you need anything, holla at me. So, we see where they go sit down and have, like, coffee or whatever. So, you know, Hargrove was kind of asking her questions about the case. But she didn't, I'm trying to figure out how to put it. She didn't want to, was trying to hide the fact that, because we found out she was working for Atwood. And so she was trying to hide the fact, she wanted to pretend like she was concerned, but not make it seem like she was being nosy or trying to get information. So in the midst of this, you know, she's sitting there, she goes into this thing about, you know, they're trying to name the new wing in the library and wop, wop, wop. And so Annalise starts recalling the conversation that she had on the phone. And so she was like, um, like, what is she going to do for you? Um, you know, did she promise to give you your kids back? Is that what happened at? I mean, and Hargrove was like, well, you know, these are my children. If you were in my shoes, you would do the same thing. And Annalise basically gets up and walks out. And we're just like, girl, play me better. So 
everybody, spent, mainly Asher, was is kind of getting pissed off at Connor as to why he's because everybody else is kind of on Annalisa's side. Like you know, we don't we don't know who did it, but we don't believe she did it. Connor is the only one that's still feeling like she did it. So Asher is kind of feeling like he's the anonymous source that everybody keeps talking about, and they feel like between the time that he was at Thomas' house and the time he showed up at the hospital, he was down at the police office signing his own signing his own immunity deal. So, um, but Michaela was kind of like, girl, just shut up. I don't want to hear it. So after, when they were at Bonnie's house, and at th this is the time that Annalise was at Laura's house, and so they were basically talking. Um, Connor, you know, keeps you know, spilling his opinions, basically saying that he believes Annalise did it. So Bonnie was like, girl, did you got a problem? Um, because I can understand Laura acting like a B-I-T-C-H right now, but I'm not understanding what your problem is. So Asher basically comes out and says, I think you're the anonymous source because you're the only one that keeps talking about how you believe Annalise did this and wop, wop, wop. And so, you know, he, this is when he basically says that he had Connor I mean, Oliver saved a copy of Annalise's phone after he erased it. I was at Oliver's house, and he basically was like, girl, you ain't, sh that Laurel and Wes ain't the only ones that got the call. She called you too, and he was like, I didn't check my voicemail to the next day. So at the end of the episode, after Laurel, I mean, Connor leaves Bonnie's house, he goes back to Oliver's house, basically saying that I did something stupid. And uh, Oliver was like, girl, you lied to me. You said that you didn't check your voicemail to the you didn't check your voicemail until the next day, but you actually listened to the voicemail that night because I talked to Thomas and he told me that you left his house hours before the fire took place. Um, and he was like, you went to Annalise's house that night, didn't you? So then we see a scene where Wes was apparently had got knocked out and he was trying, we see Connor was trying to do CPR on Wes and that's how the episode ended. Well, that's pretty much all I got for this episode. If I missed anything, leave it in the comment section down below. It looks like next week is when we're going to actually find out who it was that actually killed Wes. Um, and then I think also next week is the season finale. I, I hope not because that would be stupid. For the first half of the season, there have been nine episodes and the second half is only four. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to click that bell to turn your notif notifications on for whenever I upload a video. Also, my social media information will be in the description box down below. If you missed any of my previous How to Get Away with Murder reviews, the link to that playlist will be in the description box down below. And also, the song title and artist name to the intro song will also be in the description box as well. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.